Um, just two very quick questions for you. Um, the first question is, where do you see the current climate landscape, given we're now in the post-Paris world? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think Paris, the Paris Agreement was a, a really kind of game changer in the sense that it brought, for the first time, all the parties together with a common cause and a common and goal based on historic, current, but also future responsibilities. And uh, it gave a very strong signal in order to you know, move towards low carbon, you know, decarbonized basically future, and that really governments and businesses do have to act in order to get into this future because we are, you know, that have committed to a two degrees, well below the degrees pathway. So that, that future that I see is that we really need to move towards implementation. So I think the Paris Agreement has set the context has shown the, the pledges, the uh, national development contributions. What needs to happen now in the climate finance landscape is that there needs to be really a move from the top to the action, uh, with implementation on the ground, and we need to align most effectively all types of public and private uh, capital in order to get us to the investments needed for a well below the two degrees uh, pathway. Thank you, Barbara. And obviously the CIF has played a role um, in, the, in the climate finance sphere. If you had to pinpoint two of the CIF's biggest um, contributions or most transformational impacts, what would you say they would be? Well, I think the CIF certainly has been instrumental in getting us to the investment levels where we are today. Uh, and I think if I have to pinpoint two, I would probably say it's the programmatic approach that the CIF has been pioneering and really bringing together you know, different stakeholders different MDBs, uh, policy makers and decision makers in, really, you know, in, in order to enable a transformation on the ground in the country. And the second one is that the city has been really trying to push the frontiers, so it's been trying to really focus on uh, technologies that have a potential to get us in a low carbon climate resilient pathway, but we're still you know, at higher risk or higher costs. And we've seen that in the context of uh, concentrated solar power, but also geothermal. So I think pushing the frontier has been certainly innovating to get there, certainly been very important together, innovating in the sense of getting also ways to involve the private sector more actively.